Hello, listeners. Thank you for joining me on 21st Century Native Leaders. My name is Peter Deswitt III, and I am here with Dwayne Dale. Dwayne is a Navajo designer, originally from Shiprock, New Mexico, but now lives in the Midwest. Thanks for joining me, Dwayne. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, excited to be here. I saw your uh, I saw your IG profile and figured I'd reach out. Man. Absolutely. So. Talk with me a little bit about your where you come from, uh, where your clans, where'd you grow up? Yeah, well, let's start off with clans. I'm usually, uh, that's the that's traditional way to do it. Yate, uh, Dwayne Dale, Tachitni do Tabana Bushes Chin, Chodichitni A dash J, Hashkad Zoa A dash Nelly. So I come, uh, I grew up, born and raised in Shiprock, New Mexico. Um, you know, everything from uh, Natani Nez all the way up to Shiprock High School, uh, finished there. And then, uh, kind of from there, just went off to, um, college, college, and then, you know, further on down the line. But, uh, yeah, Shiprock and, uh, but currently my fam family resides in, uh, St. Not St. Michael, sorry, uh, Navajo, New Mexico. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. So you're... Twetchitni, that's exactly my first clan as well. So we're, we're actually our <laughs> brothers by clan. And it's interesting because my wife's clan is Tkaba. Huh? So you're, you're basically um, siblings and or si brother, sister yeah. with my daughter. So that's pretty cool. So <laughs> closely related. <clears throat> so talk with me about some of the highlights of your career. How did you get to designing some of the pieces I've seen on your website? Um, it's funny because, uh, I've always, uh, you know, how I always kind of explain this is I, I took a very interesting, um, a longer path, uh, if you will to, uh, but it was more for me, it was more a path of finding out who I was, you know, what I was good at and all that kind of stuff. And it really was just, again, it was finding who I was. And, and once you kind of figure that out, it's like, it's, it's a no brainer. It's like, I can do this in my sleep type of feeling, but, um, so, you know, growing up Shiprock, um, I, I was highly involved in sports year round, um, football, basketball, baseball, and just repeated that cycle and got the opportunity to play uh, at the collegiate level in North Dakota. So I, you know, coming from the res, you don't, you don't see many of those opportunities, at least back in the day. Uh, it's really nice to see more and more, uh, youth, like getting those opportunities, but back in the day, it's like, especially for baseball coming out of Shiprock, it was one of those, like, I need to jump on this train and like take advantage of, uh, of what's happening here. And, uh, so I did that, uh, I went to school cause I was really interested in, um, sports medicine and health science in general. So, you know, in, in pursuing that, I, uh, I found myself just, I don't know, being within that, uh, living in that space and that the science world and, um, so I went, went to undergrad and after that I decided to go further into uh, grad school and um, pursue an athletic training, sports medicine background. Um, right after that, I obviously had to put those degrees to use and uh, it wasn't, I was currently working with uh, the Navajo area office with uh, Indian Health Service for two years-ish and so I was literally sitting there, you know, like this creative element, I shouldn't say element, the creative side of me really started to kind of creep up. And uh, one of those things where I, I knew I had to, I, I, there were elements that I loved doing and I loved about product and I loved about design and I loved science. So I knew that there had to be something that you could kind of blend those two things together. Uh, so lo and behold, I kind of just Googled, you know, what is it, what do you got to do to be a footwear designer? Um, you're not, you're not taught that in, um, you're not taught that in school. You're not taught that in like a lot of like, this is your path to success. Um, so in doing so, I, um, look, found a degree, uh, industrial design, you know, when you type in industrial design, you'll see all these images kind of flood the, the Google, Google images. And it's all those things. Where I'm like, I can do that. Like, that's something I've been doing for a long time. Long story short, I moved to Portland. I got involved with one of the schools. 
And my main objective at that time was just to uh, just to share my perspective and apply that perspective and point of view to to design work. Um, and uh, what that ended up leading me to was just a, a, a job with Keen Footwear, which is a very interesting interview. It was more like a secret interview, uh, so to speak, but it was with their innovation team. So I got, you know, was able to be right there in the middle of kind of the future of what a company's creating. And um, so for two years, I was an innovation designer. And what that really means is I was able to go and really, you know, create a product, um, not just one element, but something totally new, control the form, control the colors, control really everything to bring this to life and to present to the almost the leaders of the company. And uh, so I did that. And the next thing was I was able to be on their commercial or their inline team where I uh, really, I, I like to see the commercial side as more of you're designing within a box. Um, not one of my favorite things to do, but it's, you're given a brief and this is like, Oh, this is for next season. We're going to keep doing this. So I get, I did that for a year. And then I, uh, then moved on to another team, which I was a lead designer for a smaller sub brand of keen footwear, which was really to create this brand heat for the company. And, attract more of the younger consumers to to look at their footwear differently um so outside of that it kind of trickled on into uh then going on to do more freelance and more contract stuff you know meeting a lot of people that i saw that were changing the footwear industry and uh and then kind of leads to where, what i'm doing now what i've actually wanted to do you know before moving to portland and um yeah i mean that's kind of it in a quick a quick explanation almost so your resume really quickly in less than five minutes man that's pretty cool so <laughs> when did you realize you were an artist because i've seen some of your pieces and the lines on that artwork is amazing those designs are just slick um i think it like again like it, 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 i felt like it's something that i've been doing for a long time i was just i realized that I was applying it to the wrong medium, if that makes sense. Um, I grew up at a, you know, being an 80s baby, I grew up at a time where I felt like footwear was really changing the way people looked at it. You know, we had the Air Max and the blown up Air Max bubble and like those advances in footwear, I was able to kind of grow up with that. And how I perceived that, how I saw it affect like the, the Navajo Nation community you know uh, and just playing basketball in general it was that was my perspective that was kind of like my point of view and I when I realized that I had that that uh, ability to basically reflect on your past and you're applying that to like an actual inanimate object you know and what when you realize that um, this is what companies look for um they're looking for somebody to have that point of view um and i guess that was just kind of like where i was where i found myself in this space of like i can it feels natural it feels like i can do this and uh <laughs> yeah i don't know if that really answered the question but i, I just found myself really applying this artistic ability which it's more of art with science because i love i love uh reflecting on my, my past education and really tying in the human factors element, the human performance element. And um, sometimes Keen Footwear, because of the brand they were, really didn't push in that direction just because that they don't do performance. Um, but a lot of stuff I did for innovation that, for their team was trying to push that ability of like performance, performance, performance. We could um, focus on uh, stuff that actually had science back or science backing it. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I think that was just more of my drive. And when I found that, you know, footwear was what I've always loved, uh, products. And that's just when I kind of I put two and two together and was like, this is kind of working right now. Nice, nice. I like that. So you talked about being away for 
college, probably your bachelor's, right? Bachelor of science and you got a master's as well. And it sounds like you went to industrial design as well. So while you were away at school, did you ever get to the point where you're just like, man, I just got to go home. It's a bit too much because I think in a lot of times in education, they talk about natives feeling homesick and they end up going home. Did you experience that? I, I mean, I did. And uh, the funny thing is that's kind of how my brand was created today. Um, there's always that feeling of like, well, let me go back. So I remember playing baseball. I would read up on these statistics about like how native athletes, there's a percentage that would, you know, do a semester or a year and they're, they're out. Um, and then it, it's not because they couldn't like hack it or like they weren't smart enough. It was, it was really due to that, you know, being home when you're away from a place where you, you look like everyone else, that stuff will hit you like harder, especially when the pressure of learning and the pressure of performing is knocking on your door every day. Um, but when you can kind of like turn that into like, for me, it was to turn that into this, um, uh, more of a, a driver or driving effect. Uh, I remember growing up, I'm going to kind of dip into a little bit of how I, when I created this brand, I mean, growing up, you know, your relatives would always talk about uh, the four sacred mountains and this idea, I shouldn't say idea, but this um, way of thinking of you're truly never home unless you're within the four mountains. And that's something that's always kind of stuck with me. And I, you know, wanted to turn that into uh, a way of thinking because that's how I treated it. You know, if I I've always had that mindset, it was no matter where I was at, you know, I'm still there. I can, you know, can picture or um, smell, imagine all this kind of stuff that's happening. It's like putting myself in my own little, like, happy place, uh, staying in that zone of, uh, being within that back home, it was a physical landscape. But for me, it was that, that mental state of mind and to keep pushing, you know, there, there's, there are things to, to be explored. There are things to be, um, to be done. And for me, knowing if I went back home right away, it, it was, it was going to be more of a, uh, it's like, it's like trying to quit coffee. You know, you can get, you're going to get that withdrawal, right away. And that's, that's how was kind of how I looked at it. You know, I, I didn't want to, um, I don't know if give in is the right word, but I just didn't want to like quickly provide myself that, that feeling of satisfaction of like, I just got to be home for this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that that was there for sure. The feeling okay. was there. Absolutely. I think that's, that's a common struggle. Na- native, uh, student college students face and it's pretty real I, I think that's that's part of it so was it always your dream to be a designer like you are right now um no I don't think it was I, I don't know I mean I think if you ask a lot of younger kids now you know when they look at social media and, and how involved they are with everything else the idea of what a designer is and the look of a designer I can see that very appealing to a lot of people, you know, it's like, you're just kind of sitting around and you think, and you have this idea and then you kind of like go with it. Um, it is part of the process, but the reality of being a footwear designer or innovation designer is you are neck deep in, um, engineering. You're really involved in abstract elements. You, you know, you're, you're doing everything from taking a brief um, from another coworker, design brief, and at the same time, you could be um, um, working in Adobe Illustrator, creating a, a basically a, a blueprint for an outsole or the, the sole of a shoe. Um, and what a lot of people don't realize is that takes um, a different state of mind. And so, really, I feel like if I was a kid and someone said you could be this, but you got to do every single one of these things to do it. You almost kind of be like, no, I don't want to do that now. I want, I want to just do something easier. But uh, I think as I got older and I started to realize like 
you know, because it, it felt like it came more natural to me to blend the science and the art elements. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm like, this is definitely what I, I want to do. And I want to continue to do because it's something that, again, going back to high school, this is one thing that was never just like, you could do this. <laughs> um, but yeah. So yeah, I, the answer would definitely be no for a younger kid. And if I was thinking like, I want to be a designer. <clears throat> Nice. That's, uh, that's awesome. And I think that's pretty common with youth is, you know, I mean, I was actually an accountant before I got into education. So definitely career paths definitely change. So talk with me a little bit. I know earlier you mentioned uh, you're a freelancer. What does that entail? I know that's, you know, going out on your own, but what does that entail as an industrial designer? Um, I think what, what that, uh, what that gives me is that it gives me opportunity to work with a lot more brands. Um, and usually to do that, you um, usually have to create a name for yourself. Um, but how I, how I viewed it is, you know, I want to be able to, to offer companies a different perspective. Um, not necessarily like I'm doing, I'm going to design everything for indigenous people. But I think you'd be surprised to uh, to learn that a lot of big companies don't know what, when I say my perspective, my point of view, they don't know what that is until I start talking about a product. If they gave me a design brief and I gave them my point of view, my point of view comes from growing up uh, playing basketball and like, and you know, not, not a paved road, but like, a, you know, dirt ground and and so on and so so forth it's like that element of growing up as like a res kid has a big impact in how people like view things and when you kind of realize that you can put that along with your talent or your skill set you kind of become that's your that's you that's kind of your personal branding and um so being a freelance is definitely giving me the opportunity to work with uh, just different companies and not even companies itself. They, they could be startups. Like uh, currently I'm working on uh, designing a magazine, the graphic layout of a magazine here in uh, the Fargo Moorhead area. And that is, you know, just simply me wanting to, to stretch a different creative muscle that I felt like is, is in me. And, you know, it's a, footwear is a big part of my life. Um, but at the same time, like, again, I think being freelance, being a, your own kind of independent contractor allows you to, to open it up um, to more people with different ideas. Nice. Right on. I know you mentioned some of the companies or brands you worked for, but, you know, talk with me a little bit more about the expanded list of brands. Um, well, the, the I'll go to the, the, the main one. Um, before Keen Footwear. So Keen Footwear is not, uh, they don't own, there's another brand that sits above Keen Footwear, which is their parent brand. And I worked for their parent company, which oversaw uh, Keen and this other brand called Chrome Industries. And Chrome Industries is a high-end urban uh, cycling clothing and like mainly big for the backpacks. If you ever saw backpacks, I had the, uh, the seat belt kind of buckle. That's kind of, that's, that's them. And, um, <clears throat> so I did innovation projects for both sides, you know, one day, I shouldn't say one day, but one month I might be working on a footwear project. And next month I'm redesigning a concept for the actual buckle that, you know, where they're clipping in. Um, and so there's a lot of 3d modeling that kind of went into that process. And, uh, so there was Keen, there was uh, Chrome Industries. I uh, did some projects for Leatherman, Leatherman Tool, which is there in Portland. Um, I worked for a small, uh, a local backpack soft goods there in Portland. Um, you know, just kind of collaborated while I was in school, even with Under Armour on a project because they were, you know, really just getting into the scene in Portland. Um, but uh, Yeah, I feel like, you know, for the most part, I had my hands in a lot of different um, projects. And I really didn't want to 
push them away and focus on just footwear because that's almost a, a bad or that's one of the worst things I think you can do as a designer is say, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to focus on this. You want to be able to build your tools. You know, you want to have a lot of these tools in your, um, in your toolbox, but at the same time, you want to be able to, you want to, you want to grow that creative muscle that you, that you have. And if for, you know, you know, just kind of talking about like education to youth, I always feel like that's a stronger message to kind of to share with them. Because, you know, we always kind of get in this mindset of like, I just want to do this. I'm going to focus on this till I get there. But the idea is, you know, you got to give yourself time to figure that out. Um, and at the same time, like I did, you kind of figure out who you are. You're going to find out what you're good at. At the same time, you're going to find out what you love. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, just those brands in general were the bulk of like my like four years. <clears throat> I there. There's some pretty awesome companies to design for. So talk to me about your portfolio, adding to it, taking care of that. Um, yeah. So like my, my online uh, website that I was sharing, I shared with you that uh, portfolio upkeep is no joke. It is definitely one of those things where if you, you're going to get what you put in just like with most things. Um, if you, if you have a certain style and you want to portray that through your portfolio, believe it or not, you know, some people actually look for that, you know, that graphic element that, that you kind of have, um, then you're going to take time, like making sure people know that, um, uh, for example, like for me, I, I like to kind of, with my portfolio, I like to show more of this, uh, I don't like to just put it up there. Although my website says indigenous designer, I don't want to put it out there. That just like, this is just all native, like just throw it at you all at once. It it's, it's really, I want people to know where I come from and that I'm very, very um, confident in that. And in doing so, that's kind of how I am able to keep moving forward. Um, not, not just in the, um, uh, uh, like moving forward in terms of like meeting their goals or giving them a, a, a providing them a different way of thinking. Um, so, but it is no joke. It is, uh, um, I, I, I always look at it as take as many pictures as you can. Um, and I asked a lot of questions when I was doing my projects. Sometimes I couldn't take pictures. Sometimes like I, I can't post everything that I've ever done on my online portfolio for, um, certain reasons that you just can't, you know, there, there are, uh, shoes that will be coming on in the future that I've designed, but I can't share them yet because they're not made public. Um, but those are just the, the things that, um, uh, that's just the rules really. <laughs> that's when you work with a big company, you sign the, the non-discreet and on, uh, all that. And, um, so take as many pictures as you can, you know, apply it, you know, it's almost like you want to bunch them together. And then when you have this group of work, you know, what is it? What's your style? What's your, you know, who are you? And uh, it, it's a very, very big question, but I just like throwing stuff up there and kind of seeing what sticks and then um, kind of going from there. But it is definitely a work, it, a work in progress always. It is never just a finished thing because I'm going to be adding to that, adding to that. At, at some point, I'm going to take some stuff down, really. But... <clears throat> That's awesome. I think you have a really amazing collection and, and I'll share that, uh, your site on the podcast notes and on the YouTube notes that way people can take a look at your work and follow you on there as well. So talk with me a little bit about your personal branding, because I see your, your, on your page, um, you know, you look like your, I don't know, is it an emoji or your brand that when it yeah. popped up on mm -hmm. zoom, I mean, it's pretty cool and, and it's definitely unique, unique. Yeah. And that, that is all, uh, that is all um, by my choice. That is definitely all by my intent, for sure. It uh, that was something I created when I was finishing up industrial the industrial design program. They always ask you to you know what what is your brand? Create something unique. And I actually wanted to turn so industrial design. One of the, uh, the abbreviations is IND. So that's how they they abbreviate the the, the major. 
So I took that and I used that and I just, you know, like indigenous designer, that's kind of like, I'm the only one, I was the only one in that program who was native. So I'm like, this is my brand right now, currently where I stand with this group of people, my classmates. And, um, and then I also wanted to create this uh, image that kind of reflected in a way how I felt like I grew up, um, growing up in Shiprock, you kind of you kind of have to grow up in this two worlds, so to speak. Um, it, it's going to get a little deep, but I wanted to create this kind of face or this image that kind of showed this, like almost like a two face idea. But the the, the story behind it was, you know, on one day you're on a reservation, the other day you're kind of off. You know, that being Farmington, I felt like I was always kind of going back and forth. Uh, but at the same time, when you think about growing up today, today, you know, being a native today, it's you kind of have to live in that world of you're constantly adapting. And when you get tired of that, like d adapting, 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 that's when you get homesick, because that's when you know whatever you don't you don't have to act like that back at home. Um, I felt like that was always kind of my struggle, but I, I realized that about myself and. That's what that's what uh, my uh, my avatar is supposed to reflect. But it does, you know, it does look like me when people when I was working at Keen. Every time I would talk, and they said they wanted to put that image on my face on videos, and I thought that was awesome. Like that would be awesome. It's like being like a um, like you're a, what do you call it? A, a, not a wanted person, but you're you're trying to hide your face. Right? Chat. Yeah, and you're like to be able to talk and you're trying to hide my identity, but the identity is like literally in the avatar of um but yeah, no, it was a. Uh, it's funny and I, I do enjoy it. I do like the it is not a serious thing at all. I, I I didn't mean for it to be comical. So I'm glad you kind of caught that. I'm glad I'm glad everybody catches that. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty unique and I think that's the thing uh, about personal branding I think a part of your career that's the, the you know we are a brand I think that's why we have resumes and we put our you know instead of resume you have a portfolio and I think that's what I was getting at and a lot of times you, know, you, you add market value to yourself by the things you do and I think that's what makes you dynamic having that background in um, exercise uh, science and sports uh, you know being a college athlete and you put that into your work and that's pretty awesome so where do you think you get your inspiration from? Uh, I mean, to be honest, I, I get my inspiration from uh, back home. It, it is very like, it is, it is not a cliche thing for me to say. Uh, but for me, like how I grew up and where I grew up is a huge part of who I am. Um, I mean, outside of sports, uh, you know, I'm a hunter. So like that was like ingrained into me for a long time so there's a different outlook on uh how i kind of you know do things regularly like um uh, from a year to year basis and it there's a lot of elements that i take from whether it's you know traveling or hunting a certain part of the navajo nation or i mean just seeing you know like uh, the different uh, elements that uh being home offers uh whether it's uh, the, the very 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 iconic colorways um color palettes the iconic scenery that uh um, the southwest has but all that i always consider like that's ours you know that that's kind of where i come from that's where we come from and i i i draw from that um it is not to say like i copy every single thing about it but there is a power in and, and knowing what those places have. And that's, yeah, really where I draw my inspiration. You know. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely see some of those undertones. And I think that's what is unique about that perspective. So a month or so, I saw a post that uh, Phrase put up on social media about some tennis shoes. They kind of look like moccasins, kind of a, a, a retro moccasin uh, mock-up of some tennis shoes talk with me about that piece so that that's all intentional that's uh that's my upcoming sneaker release that um is currently available for pre-order and that it is uh 
what I like to call it. It's a direct to consumer um, um, approach. It is, it is not uh, when you, when you are involved with footwear design, you know, kind of how, how it works. Usually it's like a year, 12 months to I mean, maybe six months to get a, a footwear from design to production ready. And sometimes that's because you're trying to make like five, 10,000 pairs for these big companies. But for me, and, you know, meeting with this, uh, the CEO of Rock Deep, it was one of those, you know, do you want to design a shoe that, you know, people would like? And, I, and right away, I'm like, I know, I already know probably 50 pairs of shoe or 50 designs in my head that I know that I want to do. So that opportunity of like, I know my audience, I know who I want to, it's very intentional of who I, I want to design for. And that's what's, that was kind of my approach. Uh, when you're in a big company, your audience is, is someone else. You really can't, you really can't say, you know, this, this shoe, I'm going to use this for example, but this shoe here is for people back home because that's, that's not a big enough number for them. Um, but I, I want to go there. I want to go there because uh, native people, and I'm just starting off with, you know, with like Navajo people, because that's where I come from. But native people deserve that, that right to be like, you know, we're designing for you. And we're not just, we're not, uh, we're not kind of, uh, how do I explain it? It's, it's funny, because I've seen a lot of images I've seen a lot of inspiration that is on designers inspiration boards that is on corporate inspiration boards that almost make it feel like they are trying to tell the story or trying to make me feel like they know who I am. And uh, as a designer, I, I, I could not like, I just didn't, it wasn't like I was offended. It was just like, I can't, that can't be it. That can't be it. And, uh, so I wanted to just dig deeper. And so it was very intentional of uh, me doing that and to kind of create the sneaker where I felt like um, Navajos, Southwestern natives, you know, because we all kind of have that similar moccasin approach. Like this is something we could be proud of. And it's not like we, this color, this color palette, this color, this colorway of it is because it's trendy. No, it's, it was intentional. It was, I know, what color works for this area. And I know what color works for this people. And in a way it's like, we need to kind of own that. And I love that idea of like, I want to take back the moccasin type of thing. Cause I, I really, in a way I really do. I want to take back what's kind of being used over and over and over. And, you know, us as Navajos, native people, it's like, we have a look. I think we all know what that look is. And sometimes younger people might be, they don't know what that is, but the idea behind all of it though, is I want to help kind of bring that identity back into like who we are, because we have such a huge effect on brands that I think that we as people don't even know. And um, so this was just kind of the start of that. So there's a lot <laughs> for me, I get really passionate about it because it, there's a lot of like fuel that kind of, um, that goes into what I want to do. Um, and this was just kind of that first element. And I'm like really happy that rock deep or Rocky reached out and kind of provided me this platform to just like, just go. And um, so, yeah, so that, that is a, a real thing. It, it's not, it is not a, a mock-up of some sort. Uh, um, the images I share are the, like the ideation and like the full look of what they will be like. And as we go on, I'm going to be sharing more of the um, pictures on feed stuff and just really tightening up all the elements. So it gets ready to get to the people um, who bought it, which That's I'm excited awesome. about. So when will that, when will that shoe be available? Uh, it's available now or it's available to pre-order, but it'll be shipped out in March. So the end the end of the pre-order is in February, February 28th. And uh, after that, they will go into, it really doesn't take that long to make, let's say 800 pairs of shoes. Um, so 
you know, once we get that, um, however, however many people will order, you know, we'll, we'll look at, uh, how much needs to be made, but that's the idea though, is get them on people's feet. And I wanted it to be in March. I wanted this, this design to be available in March because I imagine the, the pandemic will start to, I'm hoping that people will get outside more and I want this to be something that elevates them um, when they're outside. <laughs> That's awesome. So can people pre-order from your website or where would they need to go? Um, so to pre-order, yeah. I mean, I have uh, my Instagram is uh, it's at uh, indigenous designer, indigenous underscore designer. Uh, there's a link there. They could always go to rockdeep.com and order. There's also an app for Rock Deep. So, you know, there's like three elements. There's like a lot of ways you can get kind of get get in on that um, on that pre-order. And uh, yeah, I, I just think it's a, I just would love for, it would be such a cool thing to kind of see people east, west, east, west, north, and south of the nation kind of just you know, flooding the social media with just pictures of all landscapes of, you know, wearing these shoes and to see that and to kind of imagine what that looked like. I think that'd be awesome. I agree with you. To be, definitely something to be proud of, proud of too. It's not like if anything, it doesn't just like benefit me. That's not how I, I, I design. I really want to design it to benefit like everyone else. And uh, I do feel like that color though um, works with, every native american like it, it's funny like that one color you put it on it, it and, and if you're native or even if you're not but if you're native mostly i feel like that color just works and um so yeah like i'm really hoping and seeing you know how many people want to want to kind of join the movement and um it is definitely a different approach in in footwear today but i'm i'm here for whatever that is because there really needs to be a change in, you know, how, how we see product, but at the same time, um, I want to let Navajo people know that you guys are influencing product. Maybe you don't know it, but you guys are influencing like our culture, other native cultures are influencing product. And this is a way of like, this is how, even if other brands aren't showing it. That's true. I'm definitely going to take a look at it and get me a pair. So is it like a, rugged outdoor shoe a hiking shoe a running shoe what type of shoe what type of sneaker is it yeah so this one i it, i did it, i want to do a trail version so it is definitely a trail shoe um and it is definitely meant uh you know uh you can push it as far as you want um and uh it is definitely not going to be uh, uh how do i explain? it's not like a loafer it's not you know i i encourage you guys to to do what you will in these shoes and uh you know, growing up, I, I ran in my old basketball shoes every day. I went running in other like baseball cleats. So it's like, to me, you know, when, when working for a hiking company, it's funny that people get really, you know, this is what hiking shoes are supposed to look like. But really, I'm like, no, hiking shoes are my old Kobe's that I used to wear back in the day. And it's, it, it, it's, it's more of a marketing technique I, I've learned over the years. Um, but this shoe is... The outsole, the you know, it has more of a rugged feel to it. So it is meant for you to to get out, you know, take it on a dirt road, and really, I hope people don't worry about trying to get it dirty because that is the intent. <clears throat> That's true. I like that. I'll have to take a look at it and order me a pair. So, taking a look and thinking about our, our youth today, what advice? Do you have uh, for students who would like to pursue a career path that you have? I would, uh, you know, at first I want to be to. I don't want to say think hard on it, but I want to say you know do it. I also want to just say you know I guess my advice would be don't be afraid to do anything else. You know, don't let being a designer or anything in the creative world your only go-to. Um, where a lot of young kids don't know because, you know, you're so in tune with what social media is feeding you every day. 
is that, that creativity and that element of being creative and creating your own brand and setting yourself apart. A lot of it is knowing who you are and you're never going to kind of, you're never going to figure out that if you're just concentrated on one thing, like if, you know, related to basketball, you're never going to be a good point guard. If all you do is just do that one position, you got to know how all of them work. If you want to know like what this one, so that's kind of how, how I approached it. Um, I focused on a lot of soft goods <clears throat> and then came in kind of like this uh, like a backdoor move to like footwear design. I said, this is what I've done and uh, I'm passionate about footwear and all the other experiences just kind of fuel that. And, you know, um, so yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to try everything else. That's awesome. Awesome. I like that advice. Uh, is there anything else you would like to add? Um, no, no, I, I think this is, you know, this is pretty good. I think that we, uh, I think there's a lot of good stuff we talked about and, um, don't be afraid. Actually, don't be afraid to reach out. Um, if you find me on Instagram, I mean, again, you could, if you see where you can kind of see what I look like, if you see that image on Instagram, if you see me on Facebook, um, reach out. Um, I'll, I'm always like, like wanting to hear what people are doing. And uh, I love hearing when, um, if any of my work has inspired anything further for people. Um, and I, I hear that a lot from a lot of non-natives. And I want to hear that. Like, I want to be more involved and hear that more from, like, my people. And to me, that's when I know that, like, oh, I've come reaching a deeper part of, you know, I'm re I'm, it's a deeper reach. <laughs> But yeah, I like that. That's a good point. How can people contact you aside from um, Instagram? Uh, you can contact me uh, if you want to email me. Um, my email is d and d a l e j r. So it's like d n dale j r at gmail dot com. Um, you can always reach out to me there. Um, but it's like those two and Instagram or that and Instagram are uh, um, getting a lot of feedback there. So that's kind of, I like to limit it to two at most. Otherwise it takes up a lot more of my time. And uh, like currently I have the online school with my kids and stuff like that. So um, I'm juggling a lot of things, but uh, it keeps me, I feel like it keeps me young, hopefully. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I appreciate it. I, and I appreciate you taking time to share your story with me. And it's pretty powerful. And I kind of like the way you, you know, like I said, took that approach from growing up on the res and Shiprock and going and living off the res quite a, probably what, thousand miles away from home. And, you know, you yeah. continue to, you continue to stick with it. And, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why I created this podcast was to highlight stories like yours because you know you're you're out in the world and like you were saying earlier you know you you have to you have to go between two worlds and i think that's one thing that's unique about us uh, navajos and us and us natives or first nation indigenous people is we have to live in two worlds we have to have, we have our own community you know what the, i want i want to say one more thing and you just kind of popped into my head if absolutely I'm sorry, man. absolutely when, when you uh when you mention the two worlds, there are people out there, uh, believe it or not, if you if you stick it out long enough, that know what you're going through as Native people. I have a mentor who was, uh, he, I think he's like a 25 or 27 year like uh, veteran uh, scientist for Nike. And I had the privilege of working with him on a project. It was just me and him. Um, but it was very interesting because uh, he he's from Italy and uh, – we got introduced and he right away after we met, he just came in before we started this project. And he said, um, he's like, I, I notice how you adapt to everyone else and you, you adapt, you're really good at adapting to, to whether it's designs or like you know, the way you act. And, and he, you know, this was coming straight from his heart, but he's like, when well, this assignment, I don't want you to feel like you have to adapt and just be yourself. And, you know, when you start to kind of get that uh, affirmation, and it is very powerful 
And that, if anything, for me, that was one of the things that, that made me like go from here to like here. When I realized that I, I don't have to, uh, live in these two worlds daily, like jumping back and forth. Um, so, you know, that being said, I, I think, uh, the more you keep pushing, you know, as native people, as Navajo people, you know, believe it or not, there are people out there that know, they might not say it, but they know kind of the struggle in this, this, uh, what you're fighting against. And, um, it, it just, it should help you just keep going. <clears throat> I so like that, and I think that's a really good point you made. And uh, but uh, yeah, I, I appreciate everything you shared with us, and um, you know, wish you success and, and luck. And let me know if I can share stuff on uh, my pages and stuff like that. But uh, we're all set, man. I appreciate the work you're doing, and, and it's cool to see um, your work all develop. Right. Yep. Go on, man. All right. Appreciate it, man. We'll be in touch. Okay, absolutely. Um, one last thing: can I pull in? Can I can I pull pictures from your website? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, you know, some of those pictures they're um they're out. So uh, okay, and uh, yeah, I'll absolutely. And... I'll probably do one with uh, your face beside it for the back of the podcast, and then I'll try to incorporate some into the video. Okay. Yeah, sounds All good, right. man. And okay. If you need anything else, just reach out. Okay, I, I will, man. Hey, thanks. All right. Have a good one. All right, man. All right, talk to you later. Peace.